All right, we're on to the gold cards now. Woo! Back for more. For more. Uh, six mana returns. It's, it's it's sort of. I played this card. It was it was more underwhelming than I thought it would be. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Yeah. It has a lot of setup. You need a creature in the graveyard. It needs to be fairly big, and they need to have a creature that's smaller than it. It's better than the black one that gives lifelink. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but it's still... The fact that it's an instant is relevant. Because obviously you can sort of have it come out and fight two things because you do it in the middle of combat. Yeah. And be like, oh, fight that one, block that one. Um, but yeah. I think the main thing is people won't realise it's an instant and you'll be able to get people that way. Yeah, but then if you but if you fight something, then you can't also block because your your monster's taking a bunch of damage, so Well you can, you just two for one them. Yeah, but you don't get to keep the creature. Just, yeah, it's yes, it's, it's probably a two but, for one. Yeah, like okay, you don't always get three for ones with it. Yeah. But that's kind of what I want from a multicolored six mana instant. Like I don't just want to uncommon? Okay. Yeah, I don't know, maybe not. All right, Boneyard Lurker. This card's really good. Four mana, four four yeah. is already this good. Is, Ips Mutate cost is it's just really good. It's mutator. This is my favourite non-rare mutator. Yeah, it's just it generates a bunch of card advantage. It's big itself. Even if you just cast it as a four mana four four, it's really good. Yeah. Play this card. Also, it's part of a cycle that's hybrid mana on the mutate. So you can if you're if you're not black and green, you can still play it. If you're just green or just black, yeah, it's still good. Which is very cool. Next one. So we've had the mythos. Now is the real the the man himself, Brokos. Yeah. Apex of forever. Um, all the apexes are basically just busted and limited, aren't they? Like it's not really worth us talking about them. You can mutate this from your graveyard, yeah, and it's like, a six six for five. So you just play it as a six six for five, and then it just keeps on coming it. back. They just can't get it. Like this card. Yeah. This card's ridiculous. You you won't beat this card most likely if you're opponent cast it. Just shuffle up and play the next game. Yeah, channeled force. This I this is the kind of card that I read a bunch of times. I'm like, no, it's not that good, is it? Uh, you need to have a bunch of cards in your hand to cast it, and they need to be cards you want to discard. And even then, it doesn't deal that much damage. I don't know. Like say, yeah. like say I cast. Say it's like if you draw it late game, it's it's entirely useless. Like it does nothing unless you kept one or two lands. But even then, it sort of cycles your lands. But like if you if you have a light a land light hand, you've got a bunch of spells. You don't want to be discarding your spells just to like loot them yeah. back into lands and kill something. Like I don't think I would ever play this card. I just can't see a situation where I'd play this card. Yeah, it, it's one where like. <laughs> I was like, oh, that card's really good when I saw my opponent play with it. But, like, my opponent, I think, got very lucky with their draw. Because, like, they were just like, turn two, ominous seas. Turn three, draw two cards with B at one of one mind. Turn four, channel four, discard my hand. Draw, draw my hand minus one cards. Kill your thing. Put enough counters on my ominous seas to make an 8-8. And I was just like, that was really good. But then, like you said, I read Channeled Force more and I was just like, yeah, but that's only because you've drawn two, you've gone second, drawn two cards on turn three and you've played Ominous Force because otherwise it's just like you've Wheel of fortune your hand to kill my guy and it's like, all right then. Yeah. It was sort of only because they were making an eight eight with the ominous seas that. But but it's it's like it's worth pointing out that unlike Wh- Will of Fortune draws you back up to seven, but this one doesn't. It's only ever going to draw you as many as you discarded. So if you don't, have so any wind to discard, fold, wind fold your hand. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I don't think. Oh yeah, I think like like basically like you said, when your opponent gets the perfect situation, it seems really great. But I don't think this card's actually that good. I don't think it's that playable. No. No, it's called Cheville, or Bane of Monsters. Bunch of text on a two mana <laughs> creature. I I don't know why this is mythic. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? So it's a one three death touch for two. 
Mm. That's all right, that's I right. guess. That's right. That's a decent start, yeah. Yeah. At the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponents control no permanents with bounty counters on them, put a bounty counter on target creature or planes walk their control. Whenever a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter, it dies, you gain three life and draw a card. So it's it's good if you've got a bunch of removal, because then each removal card <laughs> also draws a card, basically. But like only if you pass them out one a turn. Well, you're not gonna cast more than one removal spell a turn, are you? How good's your deck? I don't know. This card is I think this card is good, but you're right, if it doesn't feel very mythic, it feels like it should be a rare. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, next up, Death's Oasis. Um, I'll let you read this one. <laughs> I mean it's on screen, so <laughs> we don't need to read it out. Um But I don't think it's very good. So when a non creature token you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Okay, so your creature dies. Top no, library, sorry. and then you return something smaller. Less to convert to your mana cost. Hand. Yeah, let's convert his mana cost. To your oh hand. So God, play. it goes to your hand. Yeah, to your hand. I don't think this card. So it's oh. kind of everything has like soul shift, kind of. Yeah. I don't think it's that good. No, not at all. And then you can sacrifice it to gain a bunch of life. Like this doesn't really do anything. And it's like you gain life equal to the greatest converted mana cost. It's not even yeah. like you gain life equal to the converted mana cost, like the combined converted mana cost. Yeah, I don't control. think this card's very good. It's a weird, no, it's card. a very weird card, but I don't think it's very good. That card's part, but that card should be on my <laughs> unplayable list. I yeah. thought it put the creature into play. No. Oh, no. It, I mean, it is whenever any creature dies. Like in a really grindy game, if a bunch of creatures can die, each one replaces itself. But even then, like... You could just mill yourself out. You could just have no targets. Like whenever a small creature dies, you might just have no targets for it. I don't. This card is yeah, pretty. Yeah, it's like when your smallest creature dies, you just mill two. And yeah, that's exactly. It. It, I think it's pretty unplayable. Yeah. Next, up, next card. Tactics. Very good. Definitely playable. Yeah, definitely playable. The life loss is is relevant. I had my opponent lose six life to it and then lost the game because of that. Um, but otherwise, black, white, instant exile target creature is never going to be a bad card, is it? No, that seems yeah. great. Yeah. So we've got the first ultimatum next. Um, if you can cast it, probably going to win it, you the game. Yeah. This is like... The different names is not that relevant and limited, isn't it? So it's basically just returning a number of permanents from your graveyard to the battlefield. Like, that's just good. It's just so, win you the game if you cast it. I guess that's what Death's Oasis is for, because you're just like, mill, mill, <laughs> mill, mill, mill. Yeah, mil. it's a combo. You Sacrifice the Death's, Death's Oasis. Oasis. Into Eerie Ultimatum, yeah. Yeah, but God, no. Just play the Eerie Ultimatum. Don't worry about the Death's Oasis yeah. part. Next up, another Ultimatum Urgent Ultimatum, very much designed for Commander, I think. this. I think it's probably not playable in draft, is it? I don't think this is very good. You get your second and third best monocoloured cards from your deck for seven mana and have to cast them immediately so you can't like get into a favourable state. Like, I don't think it's... You basically get... you probably find your creatures, wouldn't you? Maybe, like, two removal spells. It's either two removal spells or two creatures. Yeah. And it's, like, not the best one as well. And they have to be mono-coloured. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they probably are in draft, but... I don't think, I don't think I'd play this card, to be honest. I don't think that's really good. No. Frondland Felidar. Um, See how long this one's legal for in standard? What, Frondland Felidar? Okay. <laughs> Last Felidar got banned. Oh, I see. I thought you, I thought you meant it was busted because like, it wasn't last time I read it. It's no, no, this five. one's fine. It's, it's good in draft, basically. It's very good in limited. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. Yeah, creature you control with vigilance have one tap ta- tap target creature so that includes itself, obviously, so it can attack and tap something. And as soon as you have a yeah. second creature vigilance, it just becomes busted. Like just first so card good. and try and draft around it, basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, General Kudro of Dranith, another mythic. 3 mana 3 3 other cre- human creatures you control get plus one I'm already liking this it seems good in my black white humans deck yep um, and then the other ability is like whatever <laughs> it's exiles cards from graveyards why I don't know um, and then you can sacrifice two humans to destroy a big monster so again like great That's go good. white strategy yeah like this card is, yeah. it, you don't need to be told that in black white you probably play this card like whatever yeah Another card yeah. in black white you play it. This card's really good. It's also really good with General Kudro. It pretends the general yeah. also protects the general. 
Shocking turn of events. Yeah, it's almost like they designed it that way, that General Kudro is protected by the General's Enforcer. Um, yeah, this card is a 2-mana 2-3, which is already good, and then its ability can just like randomly win you the game. If, if you've got, the like we said earlier, the common that draws cards, um, it's really good, but otherwise just like making turning everything into a 1-1 is just a decent late-game ability. You can end up with like 10 tokens, and they just win you the game. Yeah. That's good. And it's Next. just like a 2-3 for 2-mana as well. So it's yeah, like, exactly. It's good starts. Next up, Genesis Ultimatum. Um, again, it's... I think no, you probably I, do play this. You do play I this, I think you do you? play this one. Because you keep all like, the cards. Yeah, you keep all the cards with this one, which yeah. is the relevant bit. So this is... A, I, no, actually, this is really good. If you cast it, you're probably going to win that game. Because the it's creatures like, go straight into play and then one well, the lands as well. But the, the yeah, the permanents, you don't have to cast them and the rest you keep in hand. So yeah, it's basically better than seven man draw it, five cards. It sort of draw five cards, but you can put any of the permanents into play yeah. if you so choose. The fact that you don't well, have exactly to as well. Is, yeah, that's exactly what it is. But no, I think, uh, yeah, you, it, if you can cast it, do, and you're probably going to win the game. Yeah. Here's another Apex, and things. like I said earlier, the Apexes are all just like flat out bombs in limited. So, are we not going to talk about the little penis on the bottom uh, of Genesis Ultimatum? Hold on, the what? <laughs> Where are you looking? Oh, yeah, what? coming out of the water. <laughs> Where the little penis is. <laughs> what is it supposed to be? Is that a little hut or something like a house? I don't know. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, there's one in the right as well, like a little shining one in the trees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> little penises. <laughs> Penis is a plenty. Love it. <laughs> nice. Is, one up on the, is that another one up on the mountain there on the left? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a couple there. I mean, that is very genesis isn't it? You know, that's where life is born. So. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> okay, so the apex is next, and I don't need to read about this because it's probably busted. Yeah. It's an apex. Bear in mind, six, six, fl- six, six, flying trample for five. Yeah. I would play that. Let's stop there. The, the mutates as well. It's worth noting that they're, all, they're always two colours as well, so you don't need to necessarily be in all five all yeah. three colours like you can just play it sort of mutate it, it's two manner of the middle of the wedge and a hybrid of either of the other yeah. two and you mutate it and you get a free card out of it so it's, it's yeah it's uh, even as even in, not in counting the 6-6 six, six trample flying that he's now got it's, this card's ridiculous yeah next up we have the poor man's cruel ultimatum um I will still I will happily be this poor man yeah <laughs> Again, I think this is like the last ultimatum. If you can cast it, go ahead, and you'll probably win the game. No, there's one more after this. No, sorry, I mean the, the last ultimatum, the one before this, I mean. All right, yeah, yeah. Like just, just like the one before it, if you can get to seven mana and you can spend blue, blue, red, 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 white, white, you're probably going to win the game. So go yep. for it. Turns yeah. out even if you've got three swamps in play as well, you can still do that. <laughs> as, as one of your opponents did in their 53-card deck. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just get there. Kinan, so this is a card I was saying my opponent found King Kong off it. So Kinan, Bond of Prodigy. This card's pretty underwhelming, isn't it? It's not made for limited, it's very much. Is it just a bear? It's just a bear for the most until seven mana is just a bear, unless you randomly have a bunch of mana tappers. But a non human creature card from among them onto the battlefield. So like you I suppose you can like play the two mana guy that taps to make creature spells castable then play Kinnon then potentially play it and like like you said it, it's one of those where when you cr- construct the perfect scenario in your head you can activate it on turn four and it's like okay. all right yeah <laughs> well, better well, every well, other game <laughs> so yeah so if yeah. you go turn two um is it Oh, Naturist. No, the, 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 the one three that taps for creatures, basically. No, because then it's still only to, to cast creatures. So you yeah. can't even use them to activate oh, this. Yeah. yeah, you can't. No, so in limited, it's basically just a bear. God. Unless yeah. your opponent randomly casts it with seven mana and finds a King Kong, in which case you lose. But <laughs> for the most part, this card's pretty terrible. It's just a bear. It's a hard to cast bear. Labyrinth Raptors next. Um, this card's good. Yeah, two mana two two menace is already pretty good. Um, when <laughs> pay two mana boost all of your menace creatures. Yeah, but also that that middle ability when every creature you control with menace becomes blocked, defending player sacrifices the creature blocking it. Like that's already pretty good. <laughs> it's yeah. always going to be a one for one at, at worst. So yeah, this card and almost certainly is going to be like it's almost certainly going to be like a two. You're probably going to get a two for one from it. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, pick back hard high and play it. Lord yeah. Rackus, I'm really enjoying mutating Lord Rackus and getting things back. Like it's just, yeah. it's really sort of un. You know, it's it doesn't look like it's going to be amazing, but this card's just so solid. The yeah, fact that it mutates a two, which is such a small cost as well. And the fact that again, it's the hybrid, so mm. you can play it in mono blue, mono red. Well, not mono, but like red blue. Yeah, you can just cast it three mana two three, and then mutate something else onto it. If you mutate onto it a second time, you still get something back. So like it triggers each time you mutate. This card's just it's like super solid. Yeah, I really yeah. like that one. Yeah, Narset of the Ancient Way doing the splits. Very impressive. She's obviously Pew. doing yoga. Um, it's a planeswalker. It's going to win the game if you cast it. The plus one on this is less inspiring than the... Yeah. Uh, but the emblem also feels like it's much better. Yeah. So it comes down on four, goes to five, you gain two life, add blue, red, or white. It doesn't so protect in all itself, life- I suppose. So it's actually, yeah, you might actually not get away with this one as much as you would with the other planeswalkers in the set. Yeah. It's interesting in the... Um, on the turn you play it, you're... I don't know, like, this is the thing. It, it comes down and you want to get it to its emblem because her emblem's g- really good. But when it you, comes down, you're, you're the, probably minus the plus it, is you? just game to life. Yeah, you're so you're much more likely to, to be something. like, minus, because that's the only way she can protect herself. Yeah, and then it becomes a bit like Hypothesis or where it's sort of like cast a removal spell for you. Yeah. Like you, you draw the card and then, yeah. The fact that you don't have to discard is cool, so you can just draw a card. Yeah. If you don't need to protect her. But then you are also adding three turns on to get into the emblem. Yeah. So ideally, obviously, what you've done is gone like defense, some sort of defensive creature, player, plus her. Plus her, you're at six mana. So you should hopefully be able to do stuff and then just emblem and win. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's. I think she's not as good as the other two planeswalkers we've seen so far, but still pretty decent. Yeah. Necropanther. This this card's really good. It just gets stuff back for free. Like this card's just really good. Three mana, three three. Three turns. Return target card with mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, this card's That's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I've played this card and it was really good. Not much more to say about it. It's it's also one of the hybrid mutators, so it can be just black or just white. But if not, it's a three mana, three three as a baseline so yeah. yeah super solid the fact that necropanthers can get other necropanthers back as well is good yeah. <laughs> that is true yeah here's another apex and it's also this, broken <laughs> I have played this this is foolish yeah it's it just it's one of those ones where you read it it's like 10 whenever yeah. it mutates Return on target creature card, total power 10 or less from your graveyard. So basically return your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, not necessarily, because like I almost, returned... Almost definitely. I returned a uh, Blitz Leech. Yeah. And that's five power. That's half my power gone. <laughs> and then it was like a Frost Lynx and a Heron. Nice. So admittedly, I got a 5-2 and a 3-4 Flyer and a 2-2 two, two, and I killed one of their creatures and Frost links to one of their creatures. Yeah. And then untapped and won the next turn. But that's not the point. Yeah, this this card is <laughs> This card is very foolish. Ridic- it's like like one of the best limited mythics ever printed. Like it's just so silly. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it really Offspring's is. Brings Revenge. Oh, this is one of those ones where there's so much text I can't bother to read. <laughs> it's it's a weird one. To, it's a two red, white, black It also doesn't really do anything. Yeah, it's two red, white, black enchantment. You're like, well, it must have a really powerful effect then. And then, so beginning of combat, your turn. Exile a red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. Create a token to copy that card, except it's a 1 1. What? What? What is this yeah. card? It's such a bizarre card. You read it and you're like, sorry? Like, even if it didn't make it a 1 1, it would still be pretty average. So, why does it also make it no, a 1 like, 1? No, like, if it, if it just made, like, if you just got every turn, you got a copy, a, a token copy of a creature in your bin back that would be good that would be really good but then being a 1-1 makes it very average yeah it's obviously like it's to do with either the creatures need come into play abilities or they need 
to be like they're coming with yeah like they're coming to play but they don't like they come in with x plus one plus one counters on them or whatever yeah it's a weird one parcel beast is next and i love this card it's so good this card is so good the fact that it mutates for two just means like it's so easy to activate and you basically always draw a card off it the turn it mutates and even if you can't mutate it four man two four that's going to start drawing a card every turn like I love this card so much. Like, I can't put <laughs> to words how much I love this card. It's so good. Oh, we've got a guest. Hi, Sarah. Oh. Mateo said hi. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, I don't think there's much more to say. This card, like, it's just good, basically. Like, it's just so... They, it can get yeah. so much card advantage. You really are. Yeah. And the fact that it puts the lands into play as well, like, if it's a land, it puts it straight into play. Like, it's, it's ramp as well. Like you can get like, such a good situation where you're like two drop, three drop, mutate this, ramp. I've got five mana on turn four and I didn't have to do anything for it. The bit where you were saying like about um, it costing two, I remember a card, there was a card called Simbad that was like one and a blue, tap, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, put it into your hand or put it into the graveyard. I used yeah. to play that because just like tapping and drawing cards is just like insane. And this yeah. is like either draw the card or put the land into play. It's like, what? Yeah, you always get the card either way, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Primal Empathy, the next one. So I, I what do you think of this? Because I just I I was gonna play it and I was like, no, I'm gonna cut it as my twenty fourth card. And I don't know if it's good. See, I played it and it was really good, but <laughs> I'm not sure I should have played it. It's a little bit does nothing, isn't it? Well, no, that's the thing. It it doesn't do nothing. It never does nothing. That's why... Because, like, there was... Mm, it does nothing if you don't have a creature. You can't just run it out on turn three, because if you didn't have a two... All right, like, if you, have no cre- if you have no creatures at all, it does nothing. Yeah. yeah. But, like, there was... There was the green and two enchantment that was very similar that was just, like, if you control the highest-powered creature, draw a card. And that was very playable. Yeah. And this is, like... And this is, like, if you don't have the biggest creature... Let, let's make you have the biggest creature and let's just like let's get there together <laughs> yeah so like I actually think it's probably pretty good okay but you just need like like I said you need set. to have monsters yeah because like just being able to like put plus one plus one counters on creatures every time is like like the fact that he doesn't do nothing unless you have no creatures at which point like you're a bit screwed anyway hmm all right, Quartzwood yeah. Crash is next, and it's a big monster that is good if you can cast it. Not much more to say, I think. It is actually just foolish. Like, yeah. I played it after playing a trample monster, attacked with the trample monster, got a copy of the trample monster, essentially. It's like, oh, look, I've won. Yeah. And I was winning, and then I just super duper won. <laughs> yeah, the card's just silly, basically. It's a 5 and a 6 6 with a really good ability. Yeah. Regal Leosol. So we mentioned this one earlier as being good in the go wide strategies. It's not. This card's like okay, I think. The mutate isn't great because you sort of lose a creature out of it. Like, it's yeah. inspired charge that relies on your opponent not having a removal spell at instant speed. So I think this card yeah. looks better than it actually is in practice. I think it's interesting because obviously you've got the three four. Like when we spoke about it earlier, we were speaking about the three four Liger creature. Yeah, and basically as soon as you do the Liger creature they all get plus one plus one and this is basically only better the first time you mutate it so it gives plus two plus one whereas the Liger gives plus one plus one but then does plus two plus two the next time whereas this only ever does plus two plus one so it's not per mutation it's just yeah. each mutation it's just I think it's just too small like whereas like you know, like as a three four body whereas it's a two two I just think it's yeah it's not it's not good enough I think like I'd play it but I wouldn't be impressed by it. I wouldn't pick well, it presume, highly. well presumably the thing is what you do is like <laughs> the fact that it's a two two you put the three four on top of it or whatever yeah yeah, yeah I think it's I better know. to cast yeah. it on turn two than it is to mutate it later on just hope you can mutate something onto it yeah right That's next one fair. Riel the Everwise this card is. I really like this card. <laughs> the, on turn, you just basically need to get it so you've got a, a spare mana and a cycler and you've already got a card advantage off it. And by the time you yeah. cycle your second card, 
Like, <laughs> it's, yeah, you're, you're laughing. So you just play it, cycle a card, draw two. Yeah, exactly. God, and then, like yeah. I said, by the time you cycle the second card, you've got so much card advantage off her. Yeah. She's just really good, basically. Like, in a blue-red deck, she's like a windmill slam, and I'd first pick her either. anyway. If I'm like blue or red i'd pick her and consider splashing and if i'm blue red i'm like yes thank you that's the card i wanted yeah it's just really good Ruinous see that's good with oh. that's good with the uh, channel force yeah that is true you draw twice as many cards but that's because she's good rather than because the other card is Ch- good <laughs> <laughs> Ruinous automatum is next and this is very much cast it and win cast it and win yeah, yeah. seven cast mana win. how many permits you got uh, oh zero well, not yeah. permanents. None. None of your permanents are what you have. Savai Thundermane, unlike the other cat, this one is very, very good in a cycling deck. Yeah. It's just free yeah. lightning helixes. It's just it's it's a it's a three two for two, which is like just great stats anyway. And then basically it turns your one mana cyclers into three mana. It's like better than electrolyze, isn't it? Because it's two mana draw and draw a card, and also one well, because no, you draw you draw a card as well. They're better. They're electrolyzers. It turns all your cycles into yeah. electrolyzers with gain, with life gain. Yeah, it's just a really good card. <laughs> all right, it Skull, is. Skull Profit is next. Um, yeah. In my head, Solid. this was like I've seen. I've read this a bunch of times, and it's always been a one three. No, it's a three one. Until it, I was it's looking hard. last it's night, hard. three one. Yeah. You're probably not going to activate the second ability that often, depending on your I, deck, but a two mana three one that I can't mana, really see but... why you'd be activating the second ability. Yeah. This isn't really the like unless it's in your black, green, red, blue deck where you're trying to get instants and sorceries in your bin. Yeah. <laughs> there are there are a couple of graveyard matters cards, but they're like usually rare or like there's that bug, but Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, no. This, this I mean you play if you're in green black you're playing it, otherwise you're not too excited. Yeah. This, this next really guy, good. yeah, Sky Cat, yeah. Sky Cat Sovereign, very good. Yeah, just card advantage and a big flyer. Well, not not necessarily big. Hopefully, a big flyer eventually. Yeah, well, it's just a one-one, and then like if if you get to make one other one-one off it, it's great. But presumably, you just have a few other fly- try and have a few other flyers. I mean, there's not loads of flies in the set, but yeah. blue but and white thing, like... are the colours that have them. That thing, you, you don't necessarily... Like, either you have other flyers and this gets massive, or you don't, you just make them yourself. Like, this card just... Yeah. <clears throat> just, yeah, pays for itself, basically. Slither Wisp is next. Um, not really designed for Limited, I don't think. It's unlikely you'll have enough flash cards to make it good. Like, it's a 3-2 flash, which is fine. Yeah, it's fine, um, but it's not a rare you're excited about, I don't think. Um, There are a few flash cards in the set but not lords yeah and they are all in blue and black to be fair but fair here's another apex <laughs> it's also insane it's also stupidly powerful three five double strike for five for four sorry the, the oh by the way <laughs> war leaders helixes when it mutates yeah it's a stupid card I hate it yeah. I'm gonna lose lots of games to it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Song of Creation. Uh, I have this as one of my 14 unplayable yeah, cards. It's, it's another one where you read the casting cost, you read the facts in the enchantment, you're like, it must be busted. It must have a busted effect. And it's like, no, and it, it does. doesn't. It does have a busted effect, just not for limited. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Yeah, that is good for construct. Like, so whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards. Oh, hold on, sounds good. Being your end step, oh, discard your hand. <laughs> it's, it's like, you read through it, you're like, oh, that's pretty good. Oh, no, it's not at all very good. Um... So yeah, that feels like in Constructed it's going to be busted, but in Limited you're not going to have cheap enough spells that it'll be worth it, are you? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not good at all. Great in a Constructed Storm deck, though. Yeah. Sprite oh. Dragon is next, and this card is very good. Very, very yeah. good in Blue Red deck. It gets big fast, and even if not, it's still a Flying Haste creature for two mana, which is like never going to be bad. Yeah, one Flying Haste, you put... Counters out for only non-creature spells, which is great. Like even if you only cast one non-creature spell, it's still good. Like two mana two two flyer for haste. Yeah. Sorry, two mana two two haste flyer for two. <laughs> um uh, again, another great mutate target. Yeah. 
it's just it's just good but like play play this card pick it high and be excited by it it's just really good yeah and also it has a cool skin on it if you uh, enter drafts early enough and you get that skin <laughs> uh here's titan's here's, nest is is this an unplayable is this on your unplayables list this is on my unplayables yeah. list this yeah. seems this is one of those cards that's like is this safe to print <laughs> I'm not sure if it is because in constructed it, someone's going to break it. Um, but in limited, it doesn't really do anything. Does it? But it basically says it might as well say all your cards have delve. All um, your colored cards have delve. Yeah, which in limited is probably not going to do anything good for you, especially not no, for four mana enchantment. Like it's no. you might get to cast one creature for a lot cheaper, but you already spent four mana in the enchantment, so it's unlikely you're actually profiting off that. Yeah. Trumpeting Gnar. <laughs> very good card three mana three three as a base already good um and it's a good thing to it's better to mutate onto than it is to put it on something else yeah um because every time you mutate onto it you get a three 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 whereas if you mutate it onto something else you just spend five mana three for three three so not amazing but yeah in your blue green deck play it on turn three and then laugh all the way to the bank when you start mutating onto it every turn yeah when you put a migratory great horn on it next turn yeah exactly get a land get a land get, get a three three, three. yeah yeah Yep, yep, yep. Oh, look, another Apex. What does this one do? Is this one also busted? Oh, it is. It's a three mana, three, three, flying first Three mana, right. three, three, flying first strike. With a really good ability. So if you mutate it, you get to cast something for free. It's not as good as the others, I don't think, but it's still pretty busted. Yeah, it's still great. Yeah. I had an opponent, four-color opponent, play this um, today, and they got the spell that puts a death touch counter... No, is there a counter? Maybe it's a lifelink counter. It was definitely a counter, so it came in as like a 3-3 three, three flying first strike, lifelink, death touch, four, I don't know. It had like a <laughs> bunch of abilities. I was like, that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> Whirlwind of Thor. What do you think of Whirlwind of Thor? How likely are you to get this? To get This is on my list of 14 unplayable cards. Yeah, so I came so close to, pl- I came so close to first picking it and drafting around it, and I was like, no, I don't think it's ever going to be good enough. But it might, it might actually be. If you've got a Jeskai deck and it's all non-creatures, like this card's just going to win you the game, surely like maybe my problem is it's not optional so do you think you just deck yourself at some point um but like at the point where it's not optional how many spells how many spells are you playing um sorry at the point where it's not optional what spells are you winning the game with and how many are you having to cast yeah that's fair. And at the point at the point where you're not playing just spells, how many spells are you playing, and can you win the game with them? It's it's a bit like Whisper Squad, isn't it? Where it's like it's rock between a rock and a hard place. Like if you don't play enough, it's not great. If you play too many, it's not great. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking like it's, <laughs> um, I had an opponent play it against me, and I was like, "All right, what you've done there is tell me you're not casting any more non-creature spells." Because you can't realistically cast any non-creature spells and not deck yourself with the way the board state is. Yeah. And like I said, it's like... All right, well, well I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to play it and win with it and send you the screenshot. Like, uh, I can I can almost... Uh, like, my opponent who cast it won, <laughs> but, but, it, but the card itself... Is. The card itself did nothing. Yeah. The card itself literally stopped them casting spells because they cast one spell, drew a card, at which point it replaced itself, at which point that isn't good enough. And then I was like, all right, well, you're obviously massively ahead, so all I can try and do is mill you out. And they realised that as well, so they just stopped casting non-creature spells. It's it's also... um... Just to add to that, the flavor text is incredibly clunky and badly written. Like it feels like a five-year-old wrote it. It's like not poetic at all. As Narset struggled to meditate, tiny dragonlings spiraled, spiraled around her, conjuring thoughts of ancient clans. Like what? Yeah. What? Um, but yeah, this is on my list of unplayable books. Like, you, yes, when you draft it and you play it on turn four, and you play three of your seven spells and draw more cards, you'll think it's amazing. Yeah. Like, how many spells are you actually playing? And, like, if you're not playing that many creatures, how are you winning? Yeah. 
Well, the next card, I assume, uh, is not on your list because we're no to join our forces. Oh, is... God, this card's so stupid. I had to read this a few times to make sure it actually did what I thought it did because it's so good. It triggers for every non human. Yeah, each, each, this card's like surely construct, like a constructed bomb. Like, for whenever a non human creature you can try to look top six cards. Six cards is a lot. You can put a human from Among Monster Battlefield tapped and attacking. Like, you know, it, it's tapped and attacking. It doesn't even put it in your hand. Tapped and attacking. And the it, difficulty oh, oh, is... And it gains and destroys... You have to have a split. I know what you're going to say. You have to have a split yeah. with non-humans. But even so, it's tapped and attacking yeah. and it's indestructible. Like, And it's a 4-4 four, for four, 4. Yeah. And it triggers for each attacker. Like, this card's so good. It's just... Like, it, like obviously, they, they feel like the mix of needing humans and non-humans is enough. Yeah. But... No, I think I think this card's really... If, if you can somehow find a way of, like... I don't know, have like non a bunch of non-human tokens and human so obviously creatures. The thing is, it's not like you can cheat it with where well, you could in like um, Modern Horizons and what have you by having shit changelings because they are human. Yeah, human and non-human, yeah. Yeah, it's not like they can be both or anything like that. They actually just surely, have surely to... They're, surely they're not non-human though. Surely they're just human. No, that's what I mean. So, like, you wouldn't be able to find that They wouldn't trigger on attacking, would they? No, but, like, you could get them, but they, they wouldn't trigger on attacking. Yeah. What I'm trying to say yeah. is, like, there have to be, like, there has to actually be this split. There's nothing that, like, lets you sort of, like... Yeah, yeah. ...dodge the line and be like, oh, I count as both a non-human and a human. By the way, 4-mana 4-4 four, four with great ability. Player. Yeah. <laughs> Zenith Flare is next. Um... Potentially busted in the cycling deck, I guess. Could do like randomly eight damage to the face. Yeah. Yeah. Play this in a cycling deck. Don't in a non cycling deck, I think. That's all I can say about that. How many cycling cards do you need? Ten. How, how many do you want it, how much do you want this to do for four mana? Uh three decent, four great, I think. At the point where it's for war leaders helix, it's obviously good. Okay. But I I'd be happy with three. I think I think ten or so cycles, but in a cycling deck, you probably got like ten to fifteen cyclers anyway. So, okay, like, in a cycling deck, I'm definitely playing this, and it's going to be amazing. It's just going to win the game a lot of the time. Fair enough. Fair enough. Might actually be standard playable, to be honest. Like with so many one mana cyclers. Oh yeah, like it could easily be standard playable. Bust out yeah. ten damage for four mana. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, next card: Alert Heedbonder. <laughs> Weird card. It's decent, right? It's better than the three mana two four in green, <laughs> but it's not much better. Yeah, it gains your life yeah. for your vigilance punters, but you can't mute it onto it. No, that's but... true. It, arguably, it's worse because of that. Yeah, cunning night bonder. Whatever, two mana two two flash with a fairly relevant ability. See, I had two of these in my slither wisp deck. And I had the 5-2 Blitz Leech thing. Yeah. It's like, Any good? It was all right. Like, I never got the Slither Leech, uh, the Slither Wisp to do anything because it always just killed it straight I was going to say, surely that's the good card, not these ones. <laughs> so you're playing these because of that run the other way around. Well, well I'm playing these because like, I'm a blue-black deck, so these are like generic 2-mana two, 2-2 two yeah, two two flash for 2-mana. Is two that mana. A card you want in this format, a generic 2-mana two 2-2 two two flash? I don't think it is. Eh. I don't know. I'd be. I'd have to be. I'd have a very good reason to play. I don't think it's that good. Fiend yeah, Artisan is next. <clears throat> Why is this mythic? <clears throat> I was going to say it's a mythic, so it's probably good. But it's it's, a, it's yeah. So it gets plus one to each creature on your graveyard. So it's potentially massive for a two mana yeah creature. And it's kind of like Survivor of the Fittest, but it puts the strain to play, doesn't it? Oh, that's actually pretty good then. Yeah. yeah, it is actually quite a good card. Because it's just sacrifice any creature. It's not like non-token or anything like that. Yeah, so the X, and the X is the based X on is how much you pay by the non-creature, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's actually probably pretty good then. Yeah, no, this card's actually really good. You, you, you trade any of your creatures for a massive monster, basically. This card's really good. I can, yeah. I, know what, I can see why it's mythic. It's just really good. Yeah, I can see why that's mythic. I thought the X was... I thought it was some sort of like... No, it's based on how much money you pay, not on the creature that you're sacrificing. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good then. Yeah. Right, let's skip the next two. Okay. <laughs> and go to Jubilant Skybonder. <laughs> okay. Why is that? Uh, because then we'll do... Uh, oh, companions. We'll do all the companions yeah. together at the end. All right, so Jubilant Skybonder is not much to say. It's a three-man yeah. flyer that's hard to kill. All right, so just, can I go back to Go Ruder? Uh... Yeah, sure. So here's a, here's the first companion, and this one's relatively easy. So the, the thing with companions, uh, we we've been a bit skeptical of them, haven't we? And I think the issue is when either the you've got a combination. The issue the issue is when you have a combination. The companion ability is like not that restricting, and the companion itself is broken. And I think this fits both those categories. Like if you have this as your companion, you're probably going to win every game. See, <laughs> mm, I don't know. Maybe the point because your your deck basically needs to be two drops, four drops, six drops, and cyclers, so you can cycle on the like the off turns. And at that point, you cast this on turn six. You've got a six six, and also another amazing creature. Oh, and by the way, it what? was it wasn't your cycle. Why, why, why is it amazing? Why is it amazing? Is a two drop or a four drop? Like, why well, is it a mi- Well, it could be a six drop. It could be, like, a card that you yeah, opponent plays that you killed. So it's like... But it, but it's also for free. You, like... <laughs> you like, didn't cast you, it from your hand. You cast it from your sideboard. Yeah, like, I'm I'm not disagreeing that the companion thing is... um, Like, the having an eight-card hand where one of the cards is, like, a set thing is really good. But, like, only having two and four drops and what have you is a genuine no it, it is a big restriction it is a big restriction but but the, the creature itself i think is really good do you not think yeah yeah like i'm not i'm not in any way saying that the creature is not really good um but like it is just a six six yeah like th- there's been like you literally said like it brings with it some other creature but like you've not like you've only played like at best you've played two two drops and two four drops that's like at best what you've done well, if, or you, if or you've, you've not spent any opponent, time returning your opponent's best creature with your four drop removal spell oh. it's any creature it gets back any creature it mills both players and gets the best creature from either graveyard uh, no, from among those cards. Oh, is it among those cards? Pick your card. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So I thought. Okay. So like you, you mill eight cards, and you get from among those cards. Yeah. Okay. So it's not actually as good as I thought it was. Yeah. No. So it's, it's not it's like maybe, maybe not the best one. It's, I mean, I'd still try and draft around it because it's still a free six six. Yeah, but like the fact that he's <clears> like <throat> put a card with even mana cost from among those cards. So like, if you put your opponent's playing an Orbosh deck. You're not getting anything from their deck. Yeah. <laughs> you literally like mill for hopes for hopes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, yeah, fair enough. But I think so this might actually be one that's better to play in your deck as a non companion then. Yeah, I think I think you like this may well just be better to play as a companion. Yeah, uh, as just a non, in your just, deck. Yeah, just in your deck, yeah. Fair enough. As soon as you see the bit from among those cards. Yeah, I didn't not... realise that was the case. Yeah. Because you might you might just whiff. Yeah. At which point it's just a six six. But you didn't even gain four life like you do with the honey monster in green. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next one's Gigantha. Um, this, this one has a much easier setup cost, doesn't it, to be your companion? Yeah. Like this, you just play as a companion because it's a five-five that you've drawn. Yeah, and it basically doesn't. It doesn't have a lot of restriction, does it? Like there are restrictions, but like not a lot. Yeah, not a huge amount. It doesn't stop you playing multicolored cards as well. Which is really yeah. like you can play multicolored cards, which I initially thought you couldn't. But this card's just I think you should if you almost definitely always make me your companion. With the companions, I think we we've had a bit of chatter in our Discord of you know, do I do I play this companion as my companion or just play a really good deck and put it in the deck? And I think ninety percent of the time you play it as a companion because it's so good starting the game with an eight card hand. Like it's just so much better than seven cards. Yeah. So I think if you can, you do it. Uh so Kahira, the orphan guard. So the restriction on this is that everything is a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, beast. You're probably not playing this as your companion. I think it's unlikely you'd be able to pull that off. But you might be able to. 
I don't know. You'd have to like pay really close attention to to what you're drafting, but I think most of the time yeah. it's just going to be a three mana three two with vigilance in your deck. Like you probably would still play a three mana three two. That like if you have any of the other creature types, any well, other yeah, creature yeah, you probably do type. still play it. But yeah, yeah, I think it's unlike. Well, maybe you can. I don't know. I haven't looked at the set enough to know how prevalent all of those creature types are. Maybe it is quite easy to set off. I've, I've not. I've not done a proper look at that. I will have a look and see what what you can do. Yeah, it'd be interesting regard. to see how hard that is actually to pull off. Yeah, Karuga the Macro Sage. This one is pretty beefy. I, th- I always get scared by this one, but I've actually beaten every opponent that played it. So maybe it's not as good as I think it is because the restriction is actually quite real. Yeah, the fact that your, card, your deck contains only cards with commercial Well, actually, no, you always get one. I thought it was um, higher converted mana cost than three. No, so you can start on turn three, but then if you don't have a three drop, you start on turn four, and then you've lost that game, basically. That's the problem. Yeah. But this card's still um, busted. Like, you definitely should try and draft around this card, because it's not a huge limitation. And you can just cycle cards on turns one and two, which you're doing a lot of the time anyway. Yeah. The fact that you can cycle cards on turn one and two is very relevant. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're I think you're probably gonna play this card. And you'll usually draw a card or two when it comes into play as well. Like it's just it's just good. Yeah. <clears throat> and then if you can't get it as your companion, just play it in your deck and it's still pretty good. Yeah, it's just a five four that draws like a card or two. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Here's Lurus the Dream Den. It is it yeah, is that card. This that is the one that surprised us. Yeah. So we both lost this in a surprising fashion, haven't we? Yeah, I was just thinking like, oh, it can't be that good. But it is only permanent cards, so it's just like all the creatures. You can still uh, play a bunch of two removal. drops. The cost but like you, yeah, you can play like your removal and what have you. Um, yeah. But it turns out being a, when your permanents are like spring, spring jaw trap and dead weight, so what they're doing is just having free removal spells every turn yeah it's just like really does add up yeah it's really good um if if not you just play a three mana three two lifelink in your deck that brings stuff back i think this might be another one where it's like actually it's better to put it in your main deck because i think that restriction is actually even though you can get it where the restriction is not a big deal i think it is probably better to not draft around the restriction if you can avoid it it's an interesting one yeah um, like I think that's one of the things I like about the companions is like you can just actually play them and a bunch of yeah, them are fine people forget don't they you can just play it yeah they're like oh I have some like forecasting cost permanents that I don't want to cut I can't play Lurus and it's like you can <laughs> you can just play a 3, three mana 3-2 three, lifelink which is fine right, well the next one is one that you're basically always playing as your companion I think because it's Restriction in draft, this restriction is non existent essentially. <clears throat> this is Lutri the Spell Chaser. Yeah, just don't play multiples, it's, it's easy enough. And this card's so good. Each normal card in your starting deck has a different name. All right, then I can do that. Yeah, I can live with that. Don't worry, I'll start with an eight card hand and double my anticipate on turn five. Fine, yeah, yeah there's not much to say about this one. This card's just it's just really good, even if you don't copy something, you've still got a free three mana three two flash. Yeah. Next one, oh, oh gosh. gosh, the prayer piercer. This is one I've played with twice. How good is it? Uh, turns out doubling the damage of every per, every everything in your deck is Real. really powerful. Yeah, um, I think the restriction is possibly smaller than the even cost cost as well. Um, be, well, we've had a bit of a chat about it because um, a lot of the because there's quite a few mutate creatures that mutate for even numbers. Oh, there's, that cost an odd number themselves. Yeah, that cost an odd, odd number. So, like, the black 4-4 four, four menace mutates for 4. Yeah. The blue flyer mutates, um, four, yeah. mutates for 4. Interesting. The, the blue flash shark mutates for 4. Um, but they're all 5 casting cost. Yeah, is has been very relevant in making my deck much more playable. Because the other thing is, like, you sort of you get to play the one drop 
mutate targets. Like there's a colourless one coming up in a bit called Mysterious Egg. Um, and that, that's obviously one of the better ones to mutate onto and what have you. Yeah. So. Proud Wild Bonder. Yeah, this guy is just, he's decent, isn't he? 4 3 trample for 4. We spoke about 4 3 tramples for 4 earlier. Yeah, and he's also got. And this one can just have them. Team. Yeah. Just get your opponent dead very quickly, basically. This this card's actually. I think it's actually better than it looks as well. Sometimes you can just get your opponent yeah. dead. Yeah, because people will be like, oh. People often misplay against it as well because they're like, oh, you can just assign the damage to me anyway, so I'll not bother blocking. And yeah. it's like. Forget that you could have killed that creature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this card's really good. This next guy is good as well. Yes. You, it basically says your opponent can't block. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Your opponent cannot block. <laughs> this card's really good. Yeah. When, when Menace is three or more, turns out... Oh, that Three or more is a lot. Yeah, it's a <laughs> lot of creatures. Like You're not going to have three creatures in play, most likely. Like, Menace, Menace is difficult to play against anywhere, and then as soon as you make it three or more, it's like, jeez. Yeah. It's a, re- it's a really... This card's like, really good. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Umori the Collector. Um, you're probably not. So I have had my opponent play this as a companion and they chose creatures and they nearly killed me just with a bunch of creatures. But I think this yeah. one's, this is one where the restriction is too strong and a four mana, four five with a really good ability is probably just worth going in your deck. What if you were a blue red spells deck? What if you were a Jeskai spells deck? <laughs> <laughs> Well, then why would you want a black green companion <laughs> that you can't you cast? Can't. <laughs> no, I don't think in limited that's not going to happen. I think, well, then you I make think all your just... spell, but then you can make all your spells cheaper so that your uh whirlwind of thought is more like you'll trigger more. And then because you're playing all non spells, because you're just playing, oh no, because they'd have to be enchantments, you just, wouldn't they? you just put this in your deck, I think, and then yeah, yeah, <laughs> just stick this in your deck and you got four mana, four five. No, here's an interesting one you're on Sky Nightmad <clears throat> do you play 60 cards in Limited? I almost uh, did I almost did but I also had a look tree so I played Singleton instead 40 cards and just stuck this in my deck I was going to say I'm more likely to just have this in my starting deck yeah because like as we as I as we talked about with the um, escape plan or whatever it's called the blue enchantment there's not there enough, enough yeah there's not enough things that are relevant so that when you get like yes a free five like a free five mana four five fly is great but I don't think it's that great that I put 20 extra cards in my deck yeah I I, I do want to at some point I do want to pull, pull that off though like play the 60 card deck and see how it goes but yeah. until that point I think just stick it in your deck because it's a five mana four five flying with an ability it's still good <clears throat> Zed at the Dawnmaker, so you have to have an activated ability on each card. I nearly pulled this one off, but I en- ended up running short of cards. Really? Yeah. Honestly, nearly that's pulled it in- off. That's impressive. Yeah. I was I was quite impressed with myself, but in the end, I was just like, well, I'll just play three What? Three, three I would, like, I'm trying to think what there could be. Uh, I can't remember them all. I had a... Uh, what colours was I? So I had, a, I had like three of the 1-1 one, one Goblin that I said I liked. I had four of the two-mana Tapper the one two that tapped so like my deck was already a pretty good red white aggressive deck but then i ended up like i ended up with like 36 card deck i was like oh i just need to stick some other stuff in annoyingly <clears throat> but this one is i think yeah this is one you're just playing in your deck isn't it i was gonna say like i i will be very impressed if somebody shows me i'll be quite impressed if somebody even shows me a an actual deck where this is possible if they show me a deck that's likely to win some games I'll be very impressed like I, I just right, don't I'll think I'll take that as a challenge and I'll add it to my growing list of things I've said I'll do by the next um, is is there test. enough creatures with activated abilities I'd have to go through and look yeah I, I, I can't remember what it, it was like my second draft in the format <laughs> so I was just like very much experimenting but I ended up just playing it as a creature and it was fine yeah um Next up, we have Adaptive Shimmera, which is basically unplayable, right? Even if you can mutate onto it, who cares? It's a 5-mana 3-3. Yeah. Farfinder, we quite like this one, don't we, Farfinder? Yeah, it's yeah. Um, the one from Dominaria that everybody 
picked, it doesn't, it doesn't it's got fly, vigilance though. instead of flying. Yeah, vigilance instead of flying, but it rem, vigilance is a lot worse than flying. But also, this is basically made to mutate onto. Like wizards might as well have printed mutate onto this creature in the in the in the image or the flavor text. <laughs> Three creature fox mutate mutate target when it enter, when mutate target enters the battlefield you must search your library for yeah. a basic land. Uh, yeah. Mysterious egg. You. Were, I mean, this, this one, one literally does say. Yeah, this one literally says mutate onto me. <laughs> <laughs> this one does actually say mutate target <laughs> zero I two. I can't really see myself ever playing this. I've played this already multiple times, but I I have also drafted two. Or Bosch decks. <laughs> yeah, that's the only. I think that's the only situation where I play. But even then, I try not to play. I'd look for like better one drops. I don't know if you've got like a lot of mutate. It's pretty good. Okay. Like getting plus one plus one on all your mutates. On your mutate is pretty good. I'll take your word for it. Crystalline Giant. This card is <laughs> a stupid card, but it's really good as well. <laughs> also. uh Make sure you read all of it because it's not as good as you think. It is still good, but not as good as you think. What's why? Why is it not good? I'm happy to have all of those abilities. Right. Are there any that you don't want? Choose a kind of counter at random and doesn't have it from flying first right death touch hexproof lifelink menace reach trample vigilance and plus one plus one. No. What do you mean? Right. You don't want. But it's more a case of it's at random. Yeah, sure, but event a three mana three three that already gains an ability the first turn you cast it. Yeah, like I'm not saying it's bad, but it's the fact that like it's not actually as great as everybody seems to think. I'm pretty but sure like, it is. It goes in any it's an easy first pick. It goes in any deck, and it's all it's a three mana three three that just gets better every turn. Yeah. It's really good. What are you saying? This is really good. Well, I've had it played against me twice and ignored it completely twice. Well, me too, but because they played on like turn seven and I just killed No, it. I've had it played against me on turn three twice. And then it turns out they went, oh, I'll get Reach, I'll get Trample, I'll get uh, First Strike. I'm like, I literally don't care. Yeah, You're a 3-3. Three, three. And like, but then, unless but then if, they, if they've gone like first time Hexproof, second time plus one plus one, second time First Strike, you're like, yeah, I'm dead now. Yeah, but... Kenneth, if you go turn two, play the thing that taps for two mana, turn three, do this. Yeah, if you hit the ones you want, it's really good. Yeah. But you have to be, you have to also be aware that, like, it, it's something play. It. And I'll admit, I got lucky, but, like, my opponent went first strike, menace, reach, trample, vigilance, and yeah, I didn't care fair. about any but of I th- those. I think they just got unlucky And that's there, five turns. This. Yeah, they just got unlucky, because it is still a three mana, three, three with abilities. Like that's, It's still very... I'm still first picking it, because it goes... In and the thing is, like, you could have added flying into that. Like, basically, like, you want hexproof, but hexproof's only relevant if they've got removal. And, like, unless it gets death touch, like... And if it's got death touch, you can just try and trade for it. It's like, unless it gets first strike and death touch, it's, like, not... Like... It's just like yes, it's good. It's a three, three for three, but it's not as good as people think it is. Okay. Because like, if it was a four, four with all of those abilities, apart from first strike, you literally wouldn't care. You'd be like, all right, it's a three, three that, like, I'll just attack creatures into. Yeah, that and is. And you'll trade yeah. off, and then eventually it'll become a four, four, and then like, literally. Hexproof is annoying if you've got removal spells for it, but otherwise you don't. It's just a another creature. Like creatures in this set, when you mutate onto them, have all of these abilities anyway. Like unless it's got first strike and death touch, like you largely don't care. Yeah. Okay. I I can I can see that. Maybe it's like I'm not I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's not the amazing card people think it is. Yeah, I think that's fair because it's you've sold it to me. You sold it to me. Yeah, uh, we've got the crystals next. Um, um, they are on my. They're on my list. They are one of they, the well, cards on my unplayables list. They do cycle though, but you're right that you're very rarely going to cast this. So just yeah. play another cycle, then basically. Uh, the Ozolith. Uh, that's on my unplayables yeah, list. I can't imagine a situation where I'll ever play. I think the setup is too much, basically. Yeah, like. Uh, Sleeper Dart? This card's interesting. What do you think of Sleeper Dart? Maybe if I've had Crystalline Giant out for 10 turns <laughs> and then I can sacrifice it and put all those counters on something else, then Ozolith might be playable. 
yeah. there you go that's how I've made those cards playable that's true yeah um, what we what we think of Sleeper Dark though would you play this um, I put that on my I put that on my list of unplayable cards because whilst it comes into play and draws a card I'd actually rather it just cycle yeah like because essentially you're cycling it because its effect just it doesn't tap the creature that's the thing like, I think that the image and the name are misleading because it doesn't actually touch like it's not sleep. like you put something to sleep sleeping, yeah yeah like what you're actually doing is, is like keeping them asleep because I'm already a, asleep I had a, I had an opponent um you could see you know on arena you can see when they're reading the card because it sort of highlights yeah i i had an opponent they had it and they kept reading like the card and then my creature and then the card and then my creature and it's like go to my beginning of combat and they're like before attacks target your creature sleeper dart i was like I guess all right not that. attack yeah like i've got the i've still got the choice like <laughs> yeah like they obviously didn't they didn't really understand how it worked <laughs> um but it's not yeah i don't think it's very good spring draw trap is next um Deals damage to any target, which is relevant. It can yeah. face the fact that it's, the fact that it's any target is what kept it off my unplayable list. Yeah, I don't think um, it's, I don't think it's absolutely terrible. No, and it's good in the Loras deck. <laughs> it's good in the Orbosh deck less. as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, Savai. Oh, oh, here's my Savai on my card list. I've just got to the Savai Sabertooth that wasn't there. I must have named it badly. <laughs> but we're now at the you know the card I missed earlier, the two mana three. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's skip that one. Uh, so it's a crystal next, and then we're onto the lands. Um, not they're much to say all about obviously the playable. There, yeah, like, they're all... yeah, they're coming to play Gain of Life lands, obviously playable. What about Bond as in, un- Enclave, then Enclave? That's the first one. If it's I have a single there, creature in my deck that has four power, I will probably play this. Yeah. It seems like a really good ability, doesn't it? Just like four mana draw a card for free. Yeah. Yeah. Like, obviously, I prefer to have more than one creature that has four power, but like, unless, like, Unless I've got an ultimatum. Um, if I've got only one creature with four power and I'm playing an ultimatum, I might not play Bonder's Enclave. But any other deck, like you can generally afford one colourless land in your deck. Yeah, you can kind of treat it as a spell as well, especially if you've got more than one four power creature. Yeah. And like with so much cycling in the set, you just play 16 or 17 lands and this is one of them, you're probably fine. Yeah. All right, Evolving uh, Wilds, not much to say about that. It's Evolving Wilds. Yeah. It's okay stop the... putting it in two color decks that's the thing to say i agree yeah. stop putting it in two color decks no i very much agree people put it in and like oh well like it won't and it's like it's a cost it's a very very definite cost yeah not being able to cast attacked. your three drop on turn three or whatever is like it can lose you games yeah. because you have stop putting wild. it in two color decks people are like the number of people i'm i have i say that to and they're like oh but like it makes no difference i'm like right have fun on turn four yeah <laughs> Like in, in Datha Triome is the first Triome, so we won't go through each of these. But the, these are just like these are these are all fine. Yeah, they're not like, as good as they used to be in Khans because you're less likely to be three colors. But they're all yeah. Fine. Like if you if you get to be all three, if if you're splashing, because I, f- I feel like this is definitely a very splashy um, format. A new, I think it's easy um, to get your splashes, though, especially with so much cycling. So like they're, they're yeah. not as premium as they have been in earlier sets in like Shards yeah. of Alara or Khans. Like, by and large, you're probably just better off with the coming to play again a live land of two colours that's in your mm, thing. I, I don't, don't think know. that's like, true, I don't know. a land that cycles is just really good. You just yeah, like la- true, yeah. Even that. though it cycles for three, a land that cycles is really yeah, no, powerful. These are definitely better than dual lands. Yeah. I think these, these are really, they're not as good as they have been in previous sets, but they're still something I'd pick highly if I was in at least two of those colours, I think. Three is also a lot. Yeah, but it's just but, it's just for the fact that it's like in the early game it makes no difference, but if you draw it on turn six or seven, swapping out your land yeah, yeah. Spell, like that could be the difference between winning and losing the game. Yeah. yeah. Not uh, not disputing that in any way. And that's it. That's, that's the it. set. That's it. We've got to the end. Congratulations yeah. to us. The rest is basics. Yeah. Play basics if you need them. Nice. So that's the full set review. We took what, three hours to do that? <laughs> I've lost yeah. track of time. Um Maybe we weren't as in depth as some others were, but like a lot of them, like you don't actually need to go massively in depth on them. It's like, oh look, it's a three four. We can have a conversation about a three four, but it's largely a three four. It does three four things. Yeah, 
All right. Well, I uh, yeah, I think that's I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've said everything I need to say. I think overall, just final thoughts on the set. I like it so far. Um, from what I've seen, it's quite a fun, grindy set. There's a lot of like yeah, I'm enjoying games, it, which I'm enjoying. Um, I yeah, like I'm really enjoying it. Drafts, um, but yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to like finishing this and going back onto Arena and playing more. So that's that's a good sign for the set, I think. Um, yeah, and I'm enjoying building a bunch of go wide decks to show you that you can go wide. Yeah, maybe we'll. Uh, and you've got like, and, and you've randomly given yourself like five different <laughs> drafts that you have yeah. to try and do. I need to write those down. Remember, um, <laughs> but maybe in a couple of weeks we can like reconvene and look at the, the specific archetypes once we've got more used to the draft. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. That sounds good. Cool. Well, thanks okay, for watching. Okay, if you've made it this far. Um, yeah, I imagine there are people in quarantine now just leaving stuff on in the background. So hopefully that applies to you. Um, you if you've enjoyed it and you would like us to do more we'd like to know about that as well drop a like and a follow all that stuff that YouTubers say um, oh, I've just gone on YouTube sick yeah where else would I put it I've no idea um, yeah we'll be on YouTube uh, I'll put it through the website as well but hosted via YouTube um, website is tbpodcast.com it's probably linked somewhere check us out we do a podcast every other week um, but we've got like 200 and something in the back catalogue so t- if you haven't if you don't know about pod- podcast um, lots to discover bit ropey in we'll also put a link to the discord in the yeah join our discord we've got loads join of our discord it's good fun we talk a lot yeah. about magic but also a lot about non-magic there's a lot of just like random yeah there's lots of just general life. chat going on yeah um so yeah thanks for watching and we'll see you whenever the next one may be bye laters bye